there, I thought I'd share a picture of my plants. Now, my plants don't look like this anymore, thanks to ChatGPT. So not a lot of people know this or did you know that you can upload pictures, you can upload anything into ChatGPT on your mobile, for example, and it will give you answers and it can read your stuff. So you can upload images, video, audio, PowerPoint, PDF, Excel, Word, the whole thing. But here's an example of what I did a little while ago. My plants were not looking very well and I'm a very diligent plant gardener and I was wondering why this was happening and my poor old cat was getting the blame. I thought my, my cat was eating the plant or something. So I uploaded three pictures to ChatGPT with the name of the plant. And I said, my plant is not doing well. Can you save it? And it came back with this. I'm sorry to see your plant has been experiencing some issues. Blah, blah, blah. blah. It basically told me that I'm watering my plants too much. It gave me some suggestions on how to improve it. And then further down, it gave me some suggestions on uh, repotting some of my other plants because they were in pots that were too small for them. So the lesson here is that if you haven't tried uploading images on your phone, it's amazing. Um, a few weeks ago, I was on uh, the On Your Cur Show on Orshi Radio talking about how I photographed the contents of my fridge and I get ideas of what I'm going to cook. If you have tried doing something like this, if you've used ChatGPT perhaps in your real life for non-work events, I'll give you a little bit of stuff on how the models work because I think it's quite important to understand the various different tools that are out there and what they're doing when they're giving us their results. There's a lot, a lot of hype and there's a lot of talk about AI and there's AI in industry and in healthcare. like AI is everywhere <laughs> and it's only going to become even more everywhere as, as these weeks and months go by. But what I wanted to kind of clarify for you guys is that there's different sort of areas of AI and the one that we're operating in is generative. So I want to just introduce the other two, which is machine learning. So machine learning started out in around the 1950s and it was really came about from this amazing moment where it was discovered that we could create algorithms where computers could recognize patterns. So that was like a groundbreaking thing. Moving on then to deep learning. Deep learning is a very specific type of machine learning. And this was where they realized that actually deep learning models can learn from the features of patterns. So this was like groundbreaking. So this was kind of occurring um, like in the 2010s, but the real moment was in around 2016 when Jeffrey Hinton and others um, published a document which is really like the basis of artificial intelligence, which is called um, Attention is Everywhere. That led us on to generative, and this is the space that we operate in. And basically, generative AI is where we can use AI to create things. Yes, we can make things using AI. We can make text, we can make image, video, audio, all sorts of cool things. And I'm sure many of you have had a little go at having a play with some of the tools, and you'll see just how easy it is to, to, to get outputs. So this really kind of started around 2019, 2020, but the moment where it all exploded onto our screens was the 20th of November in 2022. So that's the history. So what are large language models, also known as LLMs? A large language model or LLM is a type of artificial intelligence model designed to understand and generate human language. It can execute tasks such as translating languages, composing text, so essentially what's happening when we're typing in a, a prompt or typing into the box of any of the models like an LLM, like, for example, ChatGPT or Copilot or Claude or any of the ones that Deepfake Ryan Gosling mentioned. What happens is that our text goes into a large language model where it is broken down into what are called tokens, and these are treated in various different ways. And it goes off into its database of knowledge. It brings us back an answer. It runs the answer through what is called a system prompt, which just makes sure that we can't be asking for anything. And then it gives us the output. And if you've ever used any of the models, you'll know how absolutely quickly this happens. It's super fast. It's just super amazing. There's a lot of hype and there's a lot of noise in this space of generative AI. And I, I found like there's a lot of people on LinkedIn sharing these like, you know, these are the top 50 models that are the top 50 apps you need to use. Or here's my favorite prompt list. And you know what, guys, 
they don't really work for you and I because that's their favorite prompt list. So they tend to be quite generic or they tend to be just particular to the work or the craft that they do. So in our courses, we all of our courses are cohort based learning, which means that we give you the prompts and you're bouncing ideas about how you might use these prompts and these apps in your work. And then you go away and you do it and you come back the next week and you share with it with your tribe as to how it went. So that's our model. I'm going to show you which models have which ones and you could perhaps decide what you're going to go off and have a look at yourself. So the first thing is multimodal. So multimodal, like my plant example before, is where you can upload something that's not text and it can actually see and read your and compute what you've uploaded. So you can upload an image. You can put up a PowerPoint file. You can put up Word docs, Excel, PDFs, audio, video. You can put everything into them now. What I love when I'm carrying out data analysis is I can upload screenshots, which would be images. I can do CSV files and some PDFs, drop it all in and then run my questions and run my analysis based on that mix of different things. So anyone who's basically sat down maybe to work out some data and um, you can find you, you'll find that you spend a lot of the time trying to kind of get the different data formats together. That's no longer a problem with multimodal. The second thing you might be interested in is some of the tools or some of the LLMs create images for you. So DALI is the famous um, image generating tool that comes with Copilot and ChatGPT. Um, for me, I don't think it's so important because I prefer to use Midjourney, which is another image creation tool. But you may prefer to have it all in one in one package. Another question you need to be asking yourself is, does the tool that you're using have internet access? A lot of the times I would find that I want to do something like I want to review one of our pages and review it against maybe the top ranked competitors. And I want maybe ChatGPT to advise me what changes I need to make to my page that all of the other competitors that are more highly ranked than me have. So you really needed to have the internet access to do that. Obviously, that's just one example from, from the world of my world. I'm sure you have many examples in your world where you just needed to be able to read the internet. The cutoff window, not a lot enough people are talking about cutoff windows, I think is really important. So anyone who says to you, you know, ChatGPT has read the internet, they're wrong. ChatGPT has not read the internet, okay, or none of the models have read the internet. Instead, they have been trained on a large amount of data. And what's important to know is what date that data cuts off. So, for example, you don't want to be working on a model where the information is all two years old because two years is a long time in, in this day and age. And a lot of things have happened since then. AI assistants, you may have heard of, for example, GPTs or on Claude now they have a thing called Projects or on Copilot. They have a thing called InStudio. And now on Gemini, which is the Google model, they have a thing called Gems. These are assistants where you can build your own model to sit on top of the LLM. So what do I mean by this? Well, ChatGPT has been trained on a lot of information, but it hasn't necessarily been trained on my information, my information on how we do things around here. And with an AI assistant, we are able to build our own models of how we do things around here and then run the AI on that. So more info on that in a moment. So AI assistance, really, really powerful. And the final thing is how many tokens your model comes with. So the tokens are when you put in your prompt into the model and it's converted from words into tokens, like numerical values are attached to it. But if you think of it like tokens are kind of almost like word count, but not quite the same number. So each model comes with a certain number of tokens in a window, which means it's up to that point. It will process your requests and give you answers. And after that point, it just stops. And if anyone has ever been going really deep on your favorite model and digging around and getting it to do lots of different stuff, and then it stops, it can be extremely frustrating. So that is why your context window or the number of tokens is really important. So just looking at three of the models, ChatGPT, Claude and Copilot, this is just a look at what they offer in their free tool and what they offer in paid. So as you can see, uh, ChatGPT and Claude cost $20 a month. Copilot costs $30 for Copilot Pro. Now, 
The only problem with that is you have to pay annually in advance. Copilot does not have a free trial. I really wish Microsoft would sort out their pricing on this because it's a big jump to get people to pay upfront without having had a go at the model. But once they do have a go at the model, it's pretty awesome. OK, so the great thing about Copilot is that it integrates with all of your stuff, all of your Word documents, all of your Excels, your team meetings, everything. OK, so it is a really powerful tool. And for anyone who has invested in Copilot and you know the way with Microsoft products, sometimes you just need someone to show you around. So that's coming up in October if, if you're a Copilot user. Going back to look at the other things. OK, so freebies. Copilot uh, is the only free one that has access to the Internet on the free. With the cutoff dates, OK, you're looking at um, April 2023, April 2024 on the paid. You know, it's important if it's important to you about the 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 I suppose the age of the data you're working with, you might look at that with the AI assistance. Most of the tools will allow you to create them on the paid, but they'll only allow you to view on the free version. And to me, that's an absolute game changer. Those GPTs are awesome. And um, finally, the context window, you get a larger context window on ChatGPT paid. Most of the others give you the same size context window now on free versus paid. But really, just to sum up, I would say ChatGPT is a really versatile all rounder tool. And if you haven't decided which one you're going to go with yet, it might be worth just paying for a month of it and see what you think of the experience. If writing is really important to you, as a lot of marketers, I know you're out there. Um, elegant writing, best one is Claude. Everybody will concur. Anyone who's used all of the models will concur that the writing style of Claude is just brilliant. It's much more closer to the human than any of the others. To go with Claude maybe for a free trial or even just try the, the free version for a month and see what you think of it. And then Copilot, as I said before, the beauty of that is it's all about the workflow and it connects with all of your apps. You know what? I don't have to worry about these. You can trust that we will demo the ones that you need in the courses and you don't have to bother your heads with anything else. And not only will we demo the ones you need, we'll give you the best prompts to make them work really well. These are the concerns that were brought out in a really interesting report on the state of Gen AI in marketing in April 2024. The first one was around team training and the need to get your teams trained up. Now, I really hope that for anyone here, you won't have that worry because you know that you can talk to the AI Institute and that's what we're about. We are all about training individuals, teams and enterprises in bringing AI in a really safe, transparent and practical way so that you get value on your investment in the LLMs. So again, speaking to this point about cost, um, it's a very real concern. You know, if you're worried about maybe like, should I go on free or paid? Imagine if you're looking after like 1300 staff and you're looking at 1300 co-pilot licenses at $30 a pop. It isn't cheap, but as with anything, there is a cost, but the benefits from using AI are absolutely immense, like it, it outperforms any money that you're going to spend. Again, if your trainer team are trained and they're using it wisely. Now, privacy and security come up all the time. And whenever anyone asks me a question about that, I'm always really pleased because it speaks to me of the fact that We've learned from our experience during what I would term, you know, the social media years like Web 2.0, when back then, like the likes of Meta and Google and so on, they just stole our data from us. We, we, we had no awareness of what was going on, whereas now stepping into the artificial intelligence age, first question people ask is like, what about my data? Is my stuff being trained? Where is it going? And that's brilliant. So I'm going to show you a couple of things about that coming up in a moment. Data scarcity and poor quality content, that was just ones that came up in this particular research. It was about like, will there be um, quality content in existence forever to train the models? And the answer is kind of yes. And then the last thing I would like to mention is around bias. OK, now there's a lot of talk about bias. You might have seen the stuff that happened when Google Gemini came out some months ago and they were showing us all these crazy pictures of popes and they were being very sort of ultra politically correct and was demonstrating bias. I want to show you some bias that comes up when we're using Midjourney or the visual tools. And what I would like to emphasize is that 
every single one of our courses includes a section where we're highlighting the bias and we're highlighting highlighting issues of ethics and data and we talk about a policy. So here is an example of bias in action. I was giving a training to a group of Australian educators back at the start of this year and I typed into Mid Journey, Australian woman age 45. And this is what I got. Now, if there's anyone in the group today uh, who is in that age bracket, I know that you're not looking like that. This is just age bias built into the system. So I know and I train people how to work around these biases. And if you put in Australian woman looks happy because we have to say we look happy if we're looking for women images over the age of 30. And you get these images much better. Top left is the one I went with. So if you're using DALI or you're using Midjourney and if you're finding you're not getting the image, make sure you say looks happy or looks excited and you'll get much better quality images out of it. The thing that kind of annoys me is that the Australian man age 45, where I didn't say looks happy, he's kind of handsome. OK, so there's an example of bias in action. Now, when it comes to data privacy, OK, I said I'd come back to that. Copilot and Claude do not train your data when you're on the when you're on the paid version. OK, so it means that you can be working away safely. Happy days. ChatGPT, however, you do need to know how to turn it off. So I'm going to show you that now, actually, because I think whether you're on the free or the paid version, it's very important that we have this setting set. So what you do is you go into your ChatGPT, uh, you click on your head shot up in the top right hand corner, you go into settings. Then you go into data controls and there, my friends, is the single best piece of UX writing that I've come across in a long time. Improve the model for everyone. So most people would say, of course, I want to improve it. No, 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 you don't. You don't want to improve the model for everyone. You turn this to off. OK, mine is already off. So that means that when you're using ChatGPT, it's not taking your data and it's not training the model on the back of your stuff. So if you haven't got that one already set, Go and do it now. Now, if you do make a mistake on ChatGPT and, for example, you put out some information that you really shouldn't have, like, for example, a list of email addresses or, or your credit card bill, for example, there is an opt out form that not a lot of people know about. And in the opt out form, which is available on openai.com policies, you can literally click to make a privacy request and then you just tap in, you paste in the URL of the prompt and then it will come back to confirm that it's removed that prompt from the system. So that's another nice one to know about. So we take you through all of these kind of, uh, I suppose, security and safety settings in every single one of our courses, because it's really important that we know how we're doing it and where we're doing it and making sure we're doing it safely. Now, if I said to you about five years ago, that I could give you a tool that could save you literally like nine, 10, 15 hours a week and it will cost you 20 or 30 euro. You probably wouldn't have believed me. But now we know that that is a reality. What I'm saying here is that when you start to use AI in your work where you are the commander of it, you are taking control of what you're going to get it to do. You will automatically save time because you're going to be able to remove a lot of the time consuming tasks that you probably don't want to do. You're probably doing without even thinking about. You can take them out of your workflow and then you have these little pockets of time that you can reinvest in doing something else. It's going to save you money. So there's myriad ways it's going to save you money. But for example, just on stock photography budgets, they're no longer a line item in my budget because I spend $12 a month on Mid Journey instead. You can improve the quality of your output. So you can use uh, ChatGPT, Copilot Cloud in so many different ways to give you a starting point so you never have to face into a blank sheet. It can give you ideas and then you, the human, are going to come in and finesse it and make it your own. So let us look then at how we're going to reinvest this time or how we're going to save the time from using these Gen AI tools. So this is a visual uh, that's an example of a day in the life of somebody's work. So when we're working with different corporate clients on helping teams to get up to speed with Gen AI, what we try and do is we try and graph down how they're spending their time and what kind of tasks they're spending it on. 
And then we come in and we train around the ones that can be easily taken away from them by using ChatGPT, Copilot Cloud, whatever. So here's an example. Somebody comes into work, they might have about a half an hour for a client facing call. You know, they might have um, a little bit of deep analysis, you know, nine before the phones start ringing and the emails start hopping. And then you go into this kind of team meetings time. So team meetings, writing up notes from team meetings and um, checking things out from team meetings. We all know it takes a lot of time, as does what I have done as emails, but that could be drafting anything. The writing of emails, the responding to emails, all of that kind of stuff takes an awful lot of time. And then we only have this teeny, teeny little bit of time at the end of our day for learning. So when you start to pick up tasks and learn how to use generative AI, you can redirect entirely how you spend your time at work. So you can spend a lot more time out and about on client facing work. You can spend a lot more time on analysis or indeed if your job is one that's a lot of creativity, a lot more time just being creative, a lot more time on learning. And then you'll see that the kind of the drafting of emails and the, the team meetings are reduced. So this is the future. It's a very real future. And for many people, the future is now. I know it sounds like a cliche, but it's true. So that you're literally left with just learning, client facing and deep thinking work. So this is the time thinking about, you know, how we're going to redirect our time and what we're going to do with it. This is the time where anthropologists are really coming to the fore because they are making us think about how do we want to live our lives? And that's kind of going into the really exciting part of, of where all of this is going the landscape and we go very deep on showing you how to do really good prompt engineering structures. That's the kind of, I suppose, the language of how you're going to get what you want out of it. We'll also get you started immediately on productivity apps that you can use for meetings, for slide decks, for summarization. So it's really practical. You'll be doing in the course, in the sessions, which are all run live, and then you'll basically meet up the next week and share how you got on with the group if you if you feel like it. In the second week, we do we go deep on data analysis. We do image creation. We do do all that stuff around policy and uh, privacy and so on and, and looking at the EU AI Act. And in the third week, we build out our GPTs. For example, we'd be building GPTs for proposals, for grant applications, for RFPs, anything you do like this, like there was someone who was recently saying that he used to spend 12 hours per government tender and now he spends four. So I think the government may have to change the way they do their tenders. But until now, there's a moment of arbitrage. So that is the course. So if you sign up now, I guarantee it, it's a game changer. So 